this is Jen Kiaba, and today I wanted to take you through a walkthrough of my newest image for a couple of reasons. One is that with the news that's going on right now and the directive for many people to do social distancing, I know that that can create a lot of anxiety for people. And if we are cut off from each other, from our artistic community, that can mean that sometimes we don't have the resources that we feel we need to create. So spaces and models, for example, um, and this is also a time that could be a financial strain on people. So I wanted to share this image that I created yesterday because I needed an outlet for my personal anxiety. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is that it's created on a very low budget for the most part. Um, and I created it using myself as a model in a very blank space. Now, I know that we're not all comfortable using ourselves as models for various reasons. There are societal reasons for it. There are personal reasons for it. I went through huge amounts of anxiety using myself as a model and it's something that I still struggle with even though some people would be like, you're a young woman, why would you have problems with it? Well, we all have our hangups, we all have the stuff that goes on in our head and that society projects on us. So I wanna take that and set that aside and just say that for the time being, even if you don't share your work, if you need a model, please think about using yourself because this can be a really healing tool to work through stuff that's coming up for us, especially as it feels like the world kind of goes crazy around us. So this is my image that I created yesterday, again, out of my own anxiety and stuff from my own past. I am using two props. I'm using a, a chain that I found in the basement. Um, that sounds a little bit weird, but it's literally just like a chain for uh, hoisting things. <laughs> and then um, a piece of garbage. The uh, veil that I'm using is actually a bag from Tangerines from the grocery store. And then the red dress is a wrap dress that I bought about 10 years ago and it has become a workhorse in terms of my prop and costume go-tos. So this image actually started off as this. So this is a space that I have shot in a lot of times when I haven't felt good enough to go to my studio or I'm just like mentally not in a place where I wanna leave the house. And again, that's something that comes up for a lot of us. I am a huge homebody. And sometimes the idea of getting up and driving half an hour to my studio across the river is tough. So um, I have found spaces in my house that have good light that I like to shoot. And you'll notice that there is a, a light fixture behind me, but what you can't see is that right outside of the frame, there is a dresser. So this is a very tight space. I couldn't move too much, otherwise my body would go out of frame. So there's no lights, this is just window light. So if you have a mostly blank space in your house um, or a corner that has decent light, you can think about shooting in those spaces. I also want you to think about like, what are some really weird, interesting things that you could create out of unexpected objects? So again, the uh, veil, out of a tangerine bag is something interesting and unexpected and cost nothing. The chains, maybe you don't have something like that laying around, but maybe in your garage or in your basement or in your attic, you have an interesting prop. The dress could have been a red sheet. It just happens to be that it's more of like a spandexy piece of, of fabric that I'm using but uh, certainly this could be redone with a sheet dress or a sheet toga if you didn't want to do a dress. So let me take you through what this actually ended up looking like from start to finish. So the first thing that I wanted to do was expand the frame. Um, I've been working in a square format for probably seven years since I started my Burdens of a White Dress series because for me it was the most constricting format. Um, I feel like for the message that I want to explore, a portrait orientation creates too much space up top and the horizontal orientation creates too much lateral movement. And so this is the format that I like to use to create constraint. 
Um, and I also like to work in a black, white, and red palette, again, to create constraint. So when I teach, constraint is a big word that I use because I personally believe that creative constraints actually help our creative juices flow. If we feel like there are too many options, sometimes we can get overwhelmed. And it wasn't until I started giving myself very specific constraints that I felt a wellspring of creativity kind of like come to me. Um, I started my Burdens of a White Dress project by telling myself I was going to shoot against white walls. I was going to use a single white dress as a costume and I was going to use very limited props that I could find in my house. And suddenly I was like, oh, I can shoot here and I can shoot here and this is a really cool space. And this particular space is um, somewhere that I have shot a number of pieces for that series. So. It's not a perfect spot, but it has interesting lighting and just enough space for me to move a little bit in. So what I did was I expanded the frame a little bit by copying and pasting pieces of blank wall. And then I just edited out the lamp and I edited out the little nubbin on top of my head. And my next step was to try to take that tangerine bag and make it look a little bit more like a veil and a little more red. So I'm using a hue saturation layer. And then one of the things that I've been exploring lately is uh, desaturating and bleaching skin tone a little bit for myself to try to, to get it more into the black, white, and red kind of color palette. And it's worked well in a couple of my other pieces. It didn't end up working so well in this piece, um, but it was something that I tried as I was editing. And you'll see that the, the bleached out skin tone doesn't end up really showing in the final edit. Um, but if you look at some of my past pieces, it has worked well for some of the more close-ups. Um, so this next step, oh, so just really quickly, this was um, a color fill layer on screen. And so it just basically creates like a white screen and I have it on 13% opacity. The next piece here is just desaturating the skin a little bit more. Um, so you can see that I'm just trying to get some of the pinky tones out. You'll also notice that I have something that looks kind of like a lovely little rash forming like in my cheeks and my neck right here. My skin did not like that metal. I don't know what it was in, maybe like dirt or something in the base, but my, my skin is just like, why is this on me? So when you're searching for props, just be careful you don't give yourself an allergic reaction. Then this next step here is I am using another color fill layer, but this time it's on multiply and I'm just creating more kind of like berry color for the reds. And then this next piece here is an action that I downloaded for free probably like 10 years ago. I don't know if you can still find it, but it's called Holgeroid. So if you Google that, you might still be able to download it. And it's a lovely action that gives kind of a bleached out um, lo-fi look. I've modified it a lot from its original state, so you won't necessarily get it to spit this out. Um, but that's one of the fun things about actions is that if you kind of reverse engineer them, you can learn a lot about Photoshop and then you can modify them to your specific workflow. So even if you can't find the Holgeroid uh, action on the internet for free, you might still be able to find um, this one, maybe a bleach bypass action for free or some other lo-fi action to help out. Then I did selective color just to kind of bump my reds a little bit. So I added more black and more yellow into the reds. And then I did a hue saturation layer where I've, <laughs> I'm not saturating my skin tones because there's red in there that I don't want from whatever rash I'm getting, um, but I have bumped up the reds. And so I'm getting more red in the lips, in my tangerine veil and the dress as well. And then this next piece is another action that I got for free as a tester years ago. It's called Dreamland and it was created by a photographer named Elle Moss. I don't know if she still sells this action anymore, but you might be able to find her and ask. Um, another great way to get actions is to test them out for people. So that's how I acquired this one. It's, uh, it's lovely. It's been modified a little bit too, um, but it's like I've, I've used some masks in here, but otherwise it's a fun kind of um, sepia look. I actually brought the Dreamland piece of it down to 12% and changed the uh, blending mode. On normal at 100%, this is what it looks like. 
So um, again, you could kind of get this with another lo-fi action. So if you explore the internet for stuff like that, you might be able to find something and modify it. But uh, this is something that I've used a number of times and now I forget how I <laughs> used this. So let me just change that. Color dodge, that's what I had it on, that's kind of random. Um, and then I brought up my uh, color fill layer here again, but this time I used it on overlay at 3%. You could probably do something similar um, with a curves layer to just bump up some skin tones, but this is what I did to just bring some brightness in. A little dodging and burning here to create some uh, some shape. And then this, whoops, this next piece that I did is I brought the image into something called alien skin. And you can see this is a huge step. So a couple of things. Alien skin is a standalone piece of software. It can also be used as a plugin in Photoshop. It is a paid product. Um, I've been using it for a really long time. I really love it because you can create different recipes within it. And the newer versions allows you to work in layers much the same way that you can in Photoshop. Um, I will say that it is also a write-off if you do happen to have a photography business. So if money is tight, you can still achieve looks like this through um, different Photoshop manipulation or if you're working in GIMP as free software, you can still achieve this. It's, um, you know, some of it is lens blurring, some of it is creating um, a sepia look, uh, some of it is just putting texture in there. I like alien skin because again, kind of like with an action, I've saved those recipes and so I have a specific go-to look that I like, um, but don't get caught up in needing to have this as a paid product if your finances don't allow for it at this time. Um, so that sort of warning aside, I've also duplicated the layer again on a darker color blending mode at about 40%. And you can see that it just adds a little contrast. Again, you could do this with curves if you wanted. There are so many different ways to get to the same end result in Photoshop, whether you use actions, paid products, manual all the way, you know, you can achieve those end results. That's my thesis for this whole video. The next piece is a hue saturation layer here where I'm just bumping up the reds because I lost some of the red saturation when I went into alien skin. And then this next piece is a, a little bit of color toning from infinite color palette. Um, infinite color panel, excuse me. So this is another plugin that is a paid plugin and uh, it is amazing and wonderful if you are a colorist. I am only beginning to explore its capabilities. Um, but again, paid product, you do not necessarily have to purchase this. If you do have a photography business, it is a business write-off because it's a tool. Um, it's a lot of fun, but don't get caught up on the fact that you have to have paid products or models or studios or any of the things. This is, um, like I said, just something new that I've been exploring. I think I've used it in maybe two or three of my most recent images, but I've created a whole body of work without it. So, um, you know, if it's something that you're financially able to explore, I recommend it because it's a lot of fun. It creates some really interesting results. If you're not in that position, don't worry about it. The next step is a little bit of a curves adjustment here. And then I went into levels and just created a big bump. Could have done the same thing with another curves adjustment, but sometimes I like levels because it's quick and easy. This next step was almost my stopping point where all I did is I desaturated the background and I left the skin tones actually kind of pinky, which is divergent for me again as well. Um, but I wasn't sure that I was comfortable with where this was at with this particular look. I loved the fact that it looked like an old hand painted black and white image. Um, but it didn't feel very me. And to be <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know if the final image feels very me either. Again, it was done out of a need to create to sort of self-soothe. So um, I'm, I'm sharing it with you so that uh, if you get into the weird places in your head like I get to, or like I have to create things in my particular style, which I go there a lot, well, galleries like it and magazines like it, but you as an artist, if you need to create, just create. So that's what I did here. 
My next step was just uh, a little bit of retouching with my brush tool. I just basically took some color to do a little bit of makeup. And then I took that alien skin layer again and I placed it in here at normal blending mode but a 50% opacity. And so what it's doing is it's bringing some of the browns back into the background and so I don't have that huge saturation difference. I could have just brought this to 50% but I think it was late and sometimes we don't always think logically. So I've created more data <laughs> and a bigger file this way but it's okay. There are multiple iterations of me doing that. Next is a grunge recipe that I've created that I like to bring into a lot of my images. Sometimes it feels like a nice finishing touch. And that's actually it because this is just a stamp of everything here. So if we turn off the stamp and I've grouped all of my adjustments together, I want to bring it back around to where we started and just say that when we're going through this time, but always, it's important for us to create and to not create false obstacles for ourselves in the creation process. Um, I know that there are a lot of reasons why we feel like we can't create, and some of them are very legitimate reasons, but I'm sharing this image with you in hopes of maybe be a being able to help remove some of those obstacles by saying, I understand. If it's just you alone in your house with a sheet and a piece of garbage, you can still create something. And so whatever that is, I would love to see what you create. And I hope that this time can be very fruitful for you as an artist.